Welcome to Turnpike Sports. I am Dave Weishuttle, and as always, I am joined by my producer and co-host, Doug Weishuttle. Doug, what's up? We have our first 15-0 and 0, uh, college football champion with Clemson. Wow, yeah, I know. First in history. Well, congratulations yeah. to uh, Clemson. And, college football uh, playoff history. Absolutely, absolutely. And, 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 and boy, what a uh, – I've been following Twitter as I watched the game, and uh, I saw all the betters – starting to pull their hair out while the over was a great pick and uh i jumped in on the over and i won that one but i went with alabama <laughs> and uh, that didn't work out too well for me no no and I, I i don't know if anyone was expecting clemson to run that wild over no, alabama no, absolutely not I, I know FanDuel a month ago uh handed over all the bets uh, or handed out the bets to uh, to the people that bet on Alabama. Yeah, no, they were I, just going to win that one. Yeah, they, everyone assumed they were going to win. Uh, I, I guess we should have known the uh, spread was only five and a half, but uh, boy, did that did that uh, r- really, really blow up in everyone's face. But uh, no, I like I said, I went with Alabama. I lost that one, but I went with the over and uh, I made out in that. So uh, that's uh, pretty good. It was uh you know, for people who's had enough of Alabama dominance, I think that was one of those uh, great games, the uh, games that you look at and say maybe that turns the, excuse the pun, turns the tide and maybe a maybe a new dominant team comes out of it. Well, you know, I'm, I'm looking at something right here as you were talking. Uh, Sportsbook Review reported that 55.7% of the bets had come in on the over. Yeah. Yeah, and no, that's uh, it, that was probably the smartest bet. I know William Hill reported that there was a two hundred thousand two hundred thousand dollar bet on Clemson on the money line, which was plus one ninety at their book. I mean, yeah, no, I bet people who uh, bet on Clemson really made out, and uh, you know, I, I I guess I was following the herd on this one because I know a lot of money initially went on Alabama, and that's when I put my money down on it. And uh, hey. You know, you live and learn. Following the herd. Was that a Marshall reference? Yes, right. <laughs> and, and speaking of betters, uh, I think people who uh, who bet on the Chicago Bears game uh, were pretty much let down. I, I know the uh, – I guess you kind of had an inkling that they were not going to cover the – I guess it was – was it six and a half points that they were favored by? Or Yeah. Yeah. And I guess by the end of the game, you knew that you lost that. But but people who went with the money line for the Chicago Bears uh, really, I mean, their heart dropped like the football off the goalpost. <laughs> well, I think the honorary member of the Eagles, Cody Parkey, over there. Yes. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, I feel bad for the kid. Yeah, you feel bad. But to be fair, the NFL the next day changed the missed field goal into a block. And if you, I think if you see the footage – uh, a hand was put on it, and I guess that could have changed the tra- trajectory enough for it to hit. But, um, boy, it's a heartbreaker for the Bears, heartbreaker for people who bet on the Bears. Um, but you know what? It, it, good for FanDuel. FanDuel in New Jersey. W- what was it called? The, the Double Doink Promotion. The, the Double Doink Promotion. I guess that's a uh, nod to who, who did that? The, uh, Chris Collinsworth. Uh, double Doink. Double Doink. Chris Collinsworth, yeah. <laughs> so apparently FanDuel... Um, whoever bet the money line for the Bears, they were going to get a site credit up to a hundred dollars on Fanduel. Right. So, uh, Which was know, nice of them. Yeah, nice. That was a bad beat relief from Fanduel. So that was uh, pretty decent of them. The I one think. thing I've been noticing all through this New Jersey sports betting stuff, Fanduel seems to be going over and above the call of duty for PR here. Yeah, you know, but I think it, they're it, they're doing everything possible it, to get it, really good bit, PR it, for their company. It bit them on the butt with the uh, Alabama thing, you, paying out I, I Alabama like that a month. Uh, I, I do like seeing that. I think I think it's like that. I think they lost about forty thousand yeah. dollars. I think that's one report that I read. Forty. Uh, Four hundred. Four hundred. I, I, I one report said forty thousand, and but that's the only report I saw. So who knows? And and so I, I guess someone's going to come out with a more official. Well, I'm, I'm <laughs> theory curious after that. I'm curious to see what's affected by that change in the ruling from a miss to a block because there had to have been some prop bets going on. Yeah, maybe. You I know, mean, if someone miss field goal bet as opposed to a block goal. field goal. Yeah, no. I, yeah. I guess that's something that has to be looked at. But the NFL changed it, and the NFL has the final say in official rulings so uh sports books would have to follow the nfl's lead on that one but like i said it was a busy week in the sports world so let's take a trip down the turnpike 
And today's trip down the turnpike is brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $15 off of your first order of $30 or more when using our promo code DRINK15 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Exit one. All right, let's stay with the NFL right now because uh, just this past week, the NFL made their first move into, I don't want to say the uh, the sports betting business because they just did a deal with uh, Caesars for just uh, being the official casino sponsor. It's not sports betting yet. It's basically the same deal everybody else is getting. It's a little more expensive. I think the, they so paid like $30, uh, $30 million. million? Dollars? Yeah. Boy, it's a... And not including sports betting. So uh, no. that, that's very interesting, I guess, where they use the logos. And I guess Caesars gets, Caesars, gets a lot of uh, publicity with regard to the Super Bowl and the draft. And Caesars can use the NFL logos and trademarks throughout their casinos, except where sports betting is offered. Okay. So, they, so what, you won't see it in the sports books. So so I'm not seeing it in Jersey or uh, well, Vegas. C- no, or... Caesars and Lancey doesn't have a sports book. Okay, and, that's and all, true. And, that's and also true. all the casinos everywhere else, have, you can put it. Okay. You just can't put it where the sport inside the sports book. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's, so it's anywhere not, but the sports book. Exactly. All right. So I mean that that's basically and I know there were some UK components too for Caesars with the NFL logos on their overseas properties that sort of stuff too, but the the main thing is the NFL made its first step as a league into the casino. Maybe the next step is sports betting, but they made their first step into the casino gaming realm with their deal with Caesars. Next up, we may have a look at the future of tele- televising sports here. Okay. NBC, uh, actually NBC Sports Washington Plus, and everyone's been talking about this, and it's, it's really an interesting thing. because So this is the local NBC in Washington, D.C., right? This is actually almost the online because it's not going to be shown on TV. Okay, it's this not going is to be the on alternative broadcast. Okay, all right. So yeah. if you go to NBC Sports Washington Plus, their you'll, app, their app, okay, or their website, their w- they'll okay. be shown that they're, you're going to see uh, on on screen stats, odds, and even this thing called predict the game, which MGM had touted about that before. When uh, I think they mentioned that with the uh, Jets deal or something like that, somebody had done something with some kind of predict the game kind of thing. Uh, they're going to be doing it. During the game, they're going to have 30 questions throughout the game on the bottom of the screen. Uh, here's an example of one of them. It was, it was in the uh, image that uh, we were shared with uh, from everybody over at NBC. Will Wizards forward Trevor Ariza score 10 or more points in the first half, yes or no? Okay, so these contests are basically prop bets they're during prop the game. Bets. The easiest okay. thing to do during the game. Prop bet. And yeah. I, guess, I guess, what, do you log in to their website and answer these things? And... Correct. And okay. you're entered into a contest to oh. win 500 bucks. Okay. During the game. I got to tell you, I saw the uh, the screen. <laughs> a little too much information. A little too bit. I mean, if, if anyone watches uh, Bloomberg Business or CNBC in the morning with talking about stocks and business and futures and gold prices, uh, that's what it looks like. There's a scroll on the bottom of the screen. There's information going up the side of the screen. So... Uh, it's something to get used to, especially for me. I was like looking at it, and it's it's interesting. It's got a lot of stats, a lot of data, and uh, I guess you got to get used to it. Well, you even have uh, CBS, their CBS Sports HQ uh, online app. And I everything. have that. I have that. They it's have very ton- good. they have tons of uh, images and stuff going up and down the sides and all that stuff. I know uh, was that FanDuel's TV show on TVG. <laughs> that is incredible. That is just that's yeah. betting and fantasy wow. all at the same time. That, so, that uh, talk about information overload. It's a great show with great announcers and great betting insight and great fantasy sports insight, but wow. <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those uh, things where it, you could be easily overwhelmed. You, you have to stand back from the TV because yeah. if you're too close, you're going to miss something off to the side of the screen. So, uh, no, it's uh, I guess hey, it's a new way to watch it. It's the information that you need if you're involved in sports betting or fantasy sports. So, hey, you know, get used to it. Yeah, and we'll see how these games play out. They're going to do eight uh, Washington Wizards games this okay. season. So. Now, it, any any eight are they going to be home games or they home picked eight day? and they're going to release the schedule soon? Okay, so All right. uh, it's going to be eight games. They're going to have it 
on the NBC Sports Washington Plus app and on the website. It's the alternative broadcast, not the not the TV broadcast. You know, every city has an NBC Sports thing, so I'm sure it's, this is going to this is going to trickle down to yeah. everyone else. All right. Speaking of trickling down to everyone else, the PGA Tour Commissioner Jay Monahan uh, at his little uh, press conference at the Tournament of Champions in Hawaii. Uh, made it clear that golf has been preparing for sports betting for years. Okay. Yeah. That was uh, interesting. Yeah, no, it was an interesting comment. They, they feel that golf is the perfect game for in-game betting, all that stuff. They say they've been preparing and have put all the systems in place for an integrity program, a monitoring program, and getting their shot link technology in place. I don't, know, I don't even know what that is. That's ball tracking, shot tracking, okay. course all right. tracking, all that stuff. So... They're ready to do this, and their his statement is expect the sports gambling and golf to be second, third, or fourth screen experiences. So I don't, what does that mean? I don't you're going to be seeing layers upon layers okay. of stats and all right. betting and all that. L- like where were you talking be- before basically, the last story? Get, get used to all this. Can I just say one thing about betting and golf? It is so much fun. This uh, past Thanksgiving weekend, you had the big tournament between Tiger Woods. And um, Phil, Mickelson. Phil Mickelson, yeah, and it was so much fun. You know, you, you bet on every hole, and it was, you know, you, I, I won money. It was so, yeah, of course, I want to say it was great, but it was just so much fun. You're so involved in the game more than just a casual look, see how my player is doing. It's just you're really involved with it. Well, Monahan referenced the match in his oh, uh, did he? remarks, okay. and well, uh, he watched it. He liked how they did it, sort of, I guess. I guess that was the test case for golf and betting. So Yeah, you know, I didn't see too much betting going on with that. I did. I, I was sitting in a uh, no, bar I, with I mean, my I, phone. I saw that, but I mean, nothing was in. It wasn't. <laughs> and, and by the way, I was standing next to you. You saw me betting. <laughs> I'm, 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 talking, I'm talking about like what we were just talking about with the in-game betting for an NBA. Oh, yeah. I thought I was, I was expecting to see stuff scrolling all over the place. You know, that sort of thing. Maybe the next The Match we'll see something like it, that. It did look like a traditional yeah. broadcast uh, golf yeah, match. It, that was kind of boring. Betting on it, that made it a little bit more interesting. Yeah. But I think they got to be prepared on how to broadcast it again next time. Uh, let's see. West Virginia, just real quick. West Virginia Lottery uh, stated that the state received uh, taxes in the amount of just under $30,000 from the first, first official weekend of sports betting. From one weekend? Wow. At Hollywood Casino only. Okay. So, you know, that's one casino, first weekend. There's five now, five sports books open now. And so, I think they have a sports betting app now. Bet Lucky. BetLucky.com. Yeah. That's that's part of um, the Delaware North. Delaware North, North. yeah. Uh, let's see. Par- Parks Casino just opened up. I love Parks. We were just at Parks. That was yeah, a lot of fun. If people want to go to see how the, it looked before the official opening uh, this past Tuesday, we threw up a video on it before uh, really the uh, ribbon was cut. Uh, they're doing their test period now. They're going to have the grand opening Thursday at 1 o'clock. Okay. So it should be nice to see that. And they're Just plan- in time for the Eagles. That's exactly right. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> they, they lucked out with that double doink. Double doink. And they're planning not only the Parks Casino main property in Ben Salem is going to have a sports book. They're looking at opening one at the South Philly Turf Club and also the Valley Forge Turf Club. There are, there are horse uh, horse racing venues over there, or OTBs, I believe they are. I'm not sure exactly what they are. I haven't seen either of those two places. Um, Presque Isle Downs over in western Pennsylvania, Erie. Okay. Uh, they're being sold to Churchill Downs, and the sale is being reviewed now by the Gaming Commission in Pennsylvania. What's also being reviewed is their sports betting application. So they're hoping to have sports betting at Presque Isle Downs in February. Wow, okay, that that quick. That quick. That quick. Well, they filed the application December 7th. So well, it, te- it, technically it, it, it's did, not that quick. Did I hear, hear right for uh, an application in Pennsylvania? Is it like $10 million to the state just for them to review it? 10 for the app. And to get the license, I, 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 I okay. think I, I don't know if anything's. Ref- I don't think it's refundable no. to get the license. So I don't see a state giving that. So you're in the whole ten million dollars, yep. just for the state to look at your application. Well, look at what Parks is doing. Yeah, they're, they're, they did ten million, then they put another ten million into making the sports book. 
And from what I've been seeing on the pictures of the fully open sports book that's temporarily open right now, the yeah. temporary sports book. It used to be a bar in the yeah. center. Yeah. They they have T V screens all over the place. The bar is still there. The bar is still there, yeah. And on the opposite sides they now have banks of T V screens. They have they have one one set of live tellers. It looks like they have another set of kiosks. Well they have something uh something about an electronic betting slip, so I don't know what's that's that. something new. I want to see how they yeah. do that. Yeah, it'd so. be uh see how that works out. Uh, also, uh, what happened this week, D.C. Council finally did something smart with their sports betting le- legislation. They had proposed an amendment or another bill to be uh, considered and voted on that would basically get rid of the bidding process and hand the, the entire mobile betting system to the to the lottery company, Intralot. Okay. Uh, they uh, withdrew that from consideration. They want to have the public uh, you know, vote on it and think about it and have a discussion about it. So there's no legalized sports betting just yet in D.C. Well, they better hurry up because the Washington Wizards are already uh, throwing out a lot of data on their broadcast. Yeah. So uh, I guess everyone's in- anticipating it. And, and last but not least, this is another ancillary product that you're going to probably start seeing um, being uh, from sports betting around the country. Uh, sport Radar and University of New Hampshire starting on January 22nd. They're going to be doing a multi-semester law school program on sports betting. You know, it's interesting. Why would they do it at the University of New Hampshire? I mean, do they? Does New Hampshire first have casinos, and number two, they, they don't have sports betting. They're nowhere near being close to being having two, sports two things, betting. Two things. It is a neutral site for sports betting. Okay. There's nothing there. Okay. And a lot of the faculty are from the University of New Hampshire. Okay. Yep. All right. And the main guy running all this is Daniel Wallach. Oh, okay. He's great. Yeah. Is so, he from New Hampshire? I didn't. I don't know, I don't know if he is or not. But uh, you know, they're 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 doing it there. It's two courses. This seems like a strange place. Well, it, it it seems to be almost like one of those places where a lot of people are from, or they've done yeah. work for, especially in the gaming industry. I'm assuming UNLV has kind of stuff like this or see that's where i thought it would be like either unlv or uh i think it's a colleges perfect, in new jersey i or, think it's a perfect place to start it's, it's neutral yeah, there's neutral. nothing there and they're, they're only offering two courses okay uh intro to u.s sports betting law all right and regulation and safeguarding sports integrity and advanced integrity monitoring <laughs> it's a certificate program it's okay. not it's not a degree program it's a certificate right. they're going to have more next semester but they're starting off with two great Exit two. All right, moving from sports betting, the NFL, the pro stuff, we're going to have a new college sports network coming up. Oh, really? The ACC network. Okay. Uh, this has actually been in the works since 2016. It's the conference, the ACC and ESPN are doing this together. They entered into a 20-year contract back in 2016. See, that makes sense. I mean, they, they have the... SEC network and things like that. So why not the ACC? Well, this is they're going to be launching August 22nd, 2019. And one week later, their first televised game on the network itself will be Georgia Tech and Clemson. Wow. Boy, did they luck out with that one. Tell me about it. <laughs> did they luck out with that? Good for them. So what's happening is that they're going to be starting up uh, the new network. Uh, you're going to be also – they're not going to change any uh, structures and divisions or anything else. But they're also trying to work out so that Notre Dame also plays on at least once. Well, that's smart. So they're they're trying to work out all the scheduling, and it'll be nice to see a new network sort of uh, launching. I mean, they've had this network online for a little bit, but this is the first time it's going to be a linear broadcast network on on broadcast. So, TV. so this is going to be basic cable. I mean, I don't need any special Dish Network or Roku. You, you know what? <laughs> I, I want to say it's basic cable. I don't know. Okay. Because Xfinity is one thing. Optimum's another, Time Warner's another. I have uh, so many weird things on my cable. The like, like, like I said, the SEC network, the Florida Sports Network, the this blah 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 network. So, uh, be nice to see the ACC on there. Yeah, no, it, it, like I said, it's, it's nice to see another college sports network. Probably a lot more Tim Tebow. <laughs> yeah, right. Exit three. All right. I, in prepping for the, the show, I, I came across this really interesting Washington Post article uh, dealing with esports. Uh, it focused around a female esports player that signed a deal with a minor league team, the first one to do it. Uh, then she reported getting threats from the uh, other people in the esports community. 
Then she left the team. Then everyone found out she didn't exist. That's weird. That's what I'm saying. It, That's it, bizarre. It, it, it's, it was just an odd story. I was reading it. What happened is back in December, a minor league esports team. They have minor leagues for this stuff too. When you say minor league esports, I mean they're not as good at Fortnite than the big guys who play Fortnite on on esports. Or am the, I am I making is, fun of this? Or you're, you're, you're making you're, fun you're of it, but <laughs> you're, you're actually 100 percent right. Really? Okay. The, this is this is basically their practice squads. Their oh, minor they're developing a league. Their G League. Their G League. It's okay. it's it's called the Contenders League. All right. Uh, it's a minor league feeder circuit that aims to develop players for the Overwatch League. So uh, it's a specific minor league for the Overwatch guys. Over Overwatch is a game. Overwatch is a game. Okay. All right. And uh, just want to get that clear for me and people who don't know too much about esports. What happened was the contenders team second wind okay. si- signed a woman. Yeah. Say, yeah. Insert your own you know, fart joke there. Um, they signed a, a woman, a female player named Ellie. She was a high-ranked female player, uh, never played in person. And um, this, she was ranked as number four in the North American competitive servers. Uh, and that's why they signed her. Everyone was saying this was a great thing. It's a first female signing, a first female player signing for an esports thing. The problem with the when, con- when you say signing, this was all done by email and stuff. Well, right? here, here's the problem. I'll send you the contract by email, sign it, send me back by email. This right? is the problem with the contenders league. A lot of them play remotely. You okay. can go an entire season without seeing the other person. There has talking to be. To the there there might have to be a rule in esports community that if you're going to sign someone, you actually have to physically sign it. Sign them. You, you yeah. have to physically go and talk to them and sign them. Well, what they found out was that Ellie was a fake account operated by a male player posing as a female. So now, did this guy get money for this? or That's what, you know, that's what everything is. This is this why he was doing it? Yeah, or? yeah okay. well, you, you, the Overwatch uh, runs it like a foot, uh, like the NFL. You get a contract, you get sponsorships, wow. you get uniforms, you get everything. Uh, so this guy pretended to be a, a Ellie. This, this guy pretended to be a, a female player and then uh, was reporting that he was... He, she, whatever you want to call it, uh, was being uh, bullied or, you know, all that stuff regarding uh, being the first female player. She shouldn't be there, that sort of thing. Then she just quit the team. The team lost track of her, couldn't find her. Then they found out it was a fake account. So uh, this is kind of an interesting little uh, drama going on in the esports community. Okay. Wait, nothing uh, nothing is ever boring with the esports community. No, thank God. <laughs> Exit four. All right. Now, we all know music's a big part of the Super Bowl experience. Yeah. yeah. The halftime show and all that stuff. I don't even know who's playing at halftime, by the uh, way. I think it's Maroon 5 again. Oh, okay. Or I think it's again. I don't know. I, think, I thought they played one time before. But um, this is something new that uh, Bud Light is launching. They're, you're going to have the first ever Bud Light Super Bowl Music Fest. It's January 31st to February 2nd at the State Farm Arena. Okay, so this is before the Super Bowl. It's not like during and around it, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, this is actually leading into it three days beforehand. Uh, it's three days. You have Ludacris and Migos kicking off day one. And they're taking advantage of some of the Atlanta rap scene Okay. with this. So uh, then the second day is Aerosmith. And then on the last day, Bruno Mars and Cardi B. Okay. Uh, day one tickets, ninety five dollars. That's their starting price. Which, by the way, isn't bad. Aerosmith I mean, starts at one twenty five. Okay. Bruno Mars and Cardi B start at two hundred and twenty five dollars. Now, are these because of the acts? That's the price, or because you're getting closer to the Super Bowl? Uh, it's the acts. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah, and the the most expensive ticket I saw was for day three the the Bruno Mars Cardi B stuff. Eleven hundred dollars. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and you know it's going to be whole different things. Bud Light's doing it. Uh, they're working with EA Sports, so there's going to be an esports bowl there too. Sure. Uh, so hey, lately, hey, lately, can you have a Super Bowl without Bruno Mars? Boy, is he <laughs> is he Mister Super Bowl now? The last couple Super Bowls, I, I just, it's Bruno Mars. You know, I, I mean, he does a great job, but you know, I don't, I don't, every I don't, Super Bowl, I, I don't I don't watch the Super Bowl halftime show. Uh, I did. I did watch when the the left shark was uh, screwing up the dance routine. That was weird. I remember I was in a casino when uh, Lady Gaga. 
<laughs> dove from the top of the stadium. So that was kind of weird. Um, what was last year? I can't remember last year. Uh, last year was... I Because, I, uh, boy, I, I, you know why I can't remember? Because I was so enthralled with the Philly special, which ended the half, that I wasn't really paying attention to the... Uh, to the uh, halftime entertainment, so I don't, I can't. Hey, if anyone knows what the uh, halftime Super Bowl entertainment was, give shoot us an email. Well, now you're going to have to remember about another six to ten more acts per Super Bowl because they're hoping to do this every year. Oh, okay. So, uh, you know, good luck in remembering who's playing what yeah. there. So, uh, but uh, again, I would like to see a Super Bowl without an esports tournament attached, but I guess you got to have that too. Oh, so there's an esports competition too? Yeah. Because EA Sports is one Will of the Will it be sponsors. the triumphant return of Ellie? Or no, <laughs> from our last story? No, no. Yeah. But Where's Ellie? Yeah. Oh, hey, let's get the shirts going. Where's Ellie? Yeah, exactly. And have, you know. So, have, hey, uh, sounds like fun. I got The Super Bowl is just, it, when I was a kid, it was a game. It was just the game. It was a game in cares. the daytime, too. Yeah, it was a game. It was still light out, for God's sake. I think we uh, early up with people. I think I remember up with people doing whatever up with people do. And then I think they had one guy come in with a jet pack, which yeah. I thought was crazy. <laughs> yeah. So, they, yeah, they, that was, that was my childhood. So they, they tried a lot of different things. Yeah. The, boy, it's uh, really extravagant going, so. now. Yeah. That must tear up the field though. I can't believe, but you they know, they got to do it. Things. They got to do so. it. Cause there's, so. there's a whole segment of the audience that just tunes in for the halftime show. Now it's an event. Yeah. All right. That's it for the rundown this week. Uh, to get in touch with us, call or text us at 609-512-6510. That's 609-512-6510. Hit us up on Facebook or Twitter, at Turnpike Sports, for both of those. Our email address, as always, is info at turnpikesportsradio.com. Don't forget to order your 2019 International Bikini Team calendar. Uh, in ordering information, uh, just email them at info at internationalbikiniteam.org. You'll get all the ordering information there. And don't forget, you can catch the show. It's distributed on iTunes, iHeartMedia, and Waze, Stitcher Radio, YouTube. And also, you can catch us on your smart TV, on Roku, Apple Fire, uh, Apple TV, Amazon Fire TV, through our friends over at Binge Networks, which carries the show for the smart TV uh, audience. And I just want to remind everyone that today's trip down the turnpike was brought to you by Drizzly, your online liquor store. Available in over 95 cities across North America, Drizzly offers a huge selection of, and competitive pricing with a side of personalized content. Now there's no need to leave the house. Get alcohol delivered in less than an hour by Drizzly. Head on over to drizzly.com and order today. And now get $15 off your first order of $30 or more when using promo code DRINK15 at checkout. Shop beer, wine, and liquor with drizzly.com. Stick around. Our picks are coming up. And, uh, you know, I, I when I, we do these picks on the air, I also, you know, put a little money on the in the sports book. The, the odds I used on air were different than the odds in the sports book because, you know, it, it changes until game time. I am in the sports book. I was two and one. And here I'm one and two. And I picked the same teams. So isn't sports? Sports pay, betting, pay, wonderful. Pays to shop around. Shop around. Stick around. We'll be right back with more Turnpike Sports. Hey, this is Dave Washadol from Turnpike Sports with this week's Bet Flash. Parks Casino in Ben Salem, Pennsylvania opened its sports book this week. The book opened at the main casino site, and the company plans to open a book at the South Philadelphia Turf Club and eventually also operate a sports book at the Valley Forge Turf Club. Parks is the fourth book to open in the Keystone State. NBC announced that they will be doing alternative betting friendly broadcasts for some Washington Wizard games. This broadcast from NBC Sports Washington Plus will have real-time betting statistics and data on screen and will also feature predictive contests where the viewer can win a $500 prize. And finally, if you lost some money when the ball hit the goalpost at the end of the Chicago Bears-Philadelphia Eagles game, FanDuel Sportsbook is going to help you out. In what's being called the Double Doink promotion, FanDuel announced that customers who place the money line bet on the Bears will receive an online credit matching their bet up to $100. 
From the seaside to the desert, from the betting lines to the sites online, Turnpike Sports has got you covered. And be sure to follow us on Twitter at Turnpike Sports. Bright Tech offers unique no-dust lighting products that fit right into your home, no construction required. Elevated design should be available to everyone, not just the folks with the big bank accounts. Trick out your living room, create your perfect reading nook. Whatever the situation, Bright Tech has a lighting solution for you. And now get 5% off of your entire order when using our promo code RADIO5OFF at checkout. Head on over to brighttechshop.com and start designing the life you want. Bright Tech, your bright life realized. The action is just beginning to heat up at the 2019 Borgata Winter Poker Open, January 15th through February 1st. The East Coast Premier Poker Tournament includes over 40 heart-pounding events leading up to the WPT Borgata Winter Poker Open Championship, featuring a $3 million guaranteed prize pool. Borgata Winter Poker Open, January 15th through February 1st. For complete tournament details, visit theborgata.com. Must be 21 or older. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Hey, it's Dave from House of Cards. I'm sure everyone made some sort of New Year's resolution, whether it's to lose weight, work harder at the office, whatever. And we always seem to break them a few weeks into the year. Well, here's one resolution you need to make and keep. Getting a good night's sleep with my pillow. It's patented interlocking fill adjusts to everyone and their sleeping habits. I use my pillow all the time. I sleep great at night and wake up pain free. And now there's a great new deal being offered by the folks at my pillow. For a limited time, House of Cards listeners can receive a very special offer. Go to MyPillow.com, click on the four-pack special tab, and use promo code CARDS or call 1-800-319-7913 to take advantage of this four-pack special. You'll get 50% off two MyPillow premium pillows and two Go Anywhere pillows. MyPillow.com with promo code CARDS. That's promo code CARDS to take advantage of this four-pack special. Better sleep starts with my pillow. Free stuff is awesome, but free stuff that will spice up your bedroom is even better. Just go to adamandeve.com and select almost any one item for 50% off, and then we'll load on the free stuff. Just enter this very exclusive code, BABE16, at checkout, and you'll get 10 tantalizing free gifts, including a sexy item for him, a special toy for her, Ooh. and a third item you'll both enjoy. Ooh. And for your viewing pleasure, six free spicy movies on DVD. Plus, free shipping. Always sent in discreet packaging. So go to adamandeve.com now. Get 50% off plus 10 free gifts when you enter the exclusive offer code BABE16. Again, that's BABE16. Because without it, no free stuff. That's BABE16 at adamandeve.com. We'll get right back to the show, but I want to take a minute to talk to you about Bean Genius. How would you like your coffee delivered right to your door every month, maybe two times a month? Well, now that can happen with Bean Genius. Bean Genius sells freshly roasted coffee from some of the best independent coffee roasters in the country at BeanGenius.com. And Bean Genius actually learns their customers' individual taste preferences, then suggests future coffee blends for them. Well, how do they do that? Well, this is the cool thing about Bean Genius. Over at BeanGenius.com, they use an algorithm which learns the coffee flavors you like and then pairs up what you like with the coffee that they have in stock. And it's all based upon you. Every time you order, the system learns. The system learns your preferences as you go along and order more and more coffee. And now, all our listeners at Turnpike Sports can get a special offer. You head on over to BeanGenius.com slash subscription, and you'll be able to get 10% off your purchase when you use our promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E, at checkout. That's 10% off at BeanGenius.com slash subscription with promo code PIKE, P-I-K-E. BeanGenius.com, the smart specialty coffee subscription service. I'll bet you 20 bucks I can get you gambling before the end of the day. No way. I'll give you 3 to 1 odds. No. 5 to 1. No. 10 to 1. You're on. Welcome back to Turnpike Sports. It's our wonderful pick segment. And uh, as I was saying before the uh, commercial, you know, I pick the same teams as I did at the sports book as on this show. And you know what? 
you know, the odds change uh, all the way up to game time. So uh, on in the sports books, I went two and one. And on the show, I went one and two, and I picked the same teams. Well, you know, that's, so, like I said before break, too. Uh, shop around. shop around. Get, yep. get the best odds. Get the best money lines. Get everything. Get the best prop bets. And you know what? You got to know when to place your bet. I mean, for some of these underdogs, you know, bet now or else, you know, the lines are going to change. Yeah, if to you your, like, if to you your see, detriment. If you see a line you like, nab it. Because yeah, it, it could change. It could it change. Changes. And also, if you are if you see it in one place and you're at another place when you finally decide to make your bet, you may not get that spread, that line, money line, that sure. prop bet. It'll be different. So um, whenever you see something, it really kind of pays to actually just grab it when you see it. Absolutely. Uh, so you want to get to the picks? Yep. All right. I just want to remind everyone that this week's Pro Pick segment is sponsored by Bright Tech. Bright Tech offers unique no-dust lighting products that fit right into your home, no construction required. Elevated design shouldn't be available to ev- well, elevated design should be available to everyone. It has to be available to everyone. Not just the folks with the big bank accounts. Trick out your living room, create your perfect reading nook. Whatever the situation, Bright Tech has a lighting solution for you. And now get 5% off of your entire order when using our promo code RADIO5OFF at checkout. Head on over to brighttechshop.com and start designing the life you want. Bright Tech, your bright life realized. You exclusionary wow, bastard. No, my wow. God. Hey, you don't you don't deserve Bright Tech. No. Oh, no. God, no. Bright, bright Tech is too classy just for too you. Too classy for <laughs> No, but Bright Tech is great. I, I just order a life from them. It's 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 amazing. Oh, well, hey, you know. Good for them. Good. It's good designs. Uh, they're great. I they're love great. the USB stuff too. I love the have. fact that the light with a USB it charges up my phone. So well, all right. Let's get to the picks. Uh, as always, we well this week we're going to be doing something a little different. Since there are four games, we're going to do all four games. Yeah, let's do all four games. So uh, we're going to make our picks, make our suggestions, predictions, dare, whatever dare you want. Dare I do to say. a parlay with this? Obviously, it know. is a parlay. I, yeah, I don't know. Do I, uh, I? I sometimes do the individual picks, but sometimes I throw it into a parlay. Why not? Well, we're going to do all four games. Okay. And there, we'll be putting up on the blog after uh, the show is released. Go to TurnpikeSportsRadio dot com. Click on the blog button. It'll be right up there after you after the show is uh, set out there for the public to consume. And uh, feel free to uh, comment on them, email us, tweet tweet us. We'll put them up on Facebook and Twitter, all that stuff as usual. So, all right, let's start off. Let's start off with the Indianapolis Colts at Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, Chiefs are a five and a half point favor, and there's an over under fifty seven. I'll I'll just jump right on this. I I love the way the Colts shut down the Texans last week. That was such a great game for the Colts, and I just I I thought their defense played lights out, especially shutting down DeAndre Hopkins. I I their offense is playing good, and I, I really I really think this game's going to come down to the Colts offense versus the Kansas City defense. That defense is mediocre at best, and I I really think if the Colts defense shows up the way they did last week. I, I really think it's going to be a close game, uh, better than that five and a half point spread. So I'm going with the Colts. Well, I tell you, the deciding factor for me was the Kansas City Chiefs were at home, and it, playing in Kansas City is one of the toughest places to play. I, I think it's you know that the point spread five and a half. I think I think they'll beat that five and a half point spread. I like the Chiefs in this one, but let me tell you something. And I even wrote this down. You'll see it on the blog. If this line changes to seven or seven and a half. Uh, as a Kansas City Chiefs favorite, I'm, I would rethink this pick because uh, you know they might win by a touchdown, but not more. See, I, I'm starting to think you may see the line go down. Oh, I don't you know? know. I don't know. A lot of money are go, is going on the Colts. That's what I'm saying. A lot of my well, you know, it's the playoffs. Everyone loves the underdogs, and guess what? The underdogs did amazing last week. They, yep. I think they they covered and they <laughs> some of them outright won. So uh, you know the, what an amazing underdog week last week was. That's that's why it was so hard this week. You know you, you want to go you know with the underdog because it's a smart play, but you got to go with your gut too. Yep. For I mean I'm, that's why I'm going with Kansas City on that one. All right, I went with the Colts, so we're different there. Next game: Los Angeles Chargers at New England Patriots. Let's stay with the AFC games here. Okay. Ba- Patriots are a four point favorite. There's an over under forty five and a half. I, I love the Chargers. I love what they did last week. I mean, their defense just shut down 
Lamar Jackson, who's a very mobile and dangerous quarterback, and they made him look terrible. I think he had a 0.0 passer rating in the first half, which was absolutely amazing. I think it was a playoff record. And they still didn't go to uh, Flacco. Yeah, and the one thing that worried me with the Chargers was they relied on their field goals a lot. They didn't score a lot of touchdowns. But, you know, that's why I think this one's going to be a low-scoring game. I mean, the Patriots aren't the Patriots of old. Uh, and I think the ta- the talent favors the Chargers team. And I think I'm going with the Los Angeles Chargers. I know uh, they might not win, but I think uh, they're going to be – it's going to be a very, very close game. So uh, I, I like the Chargers in this one to I, at least cover. I went with the Chargers as well. Uh, it used to be – the Patriots are in Foxborough. Oh, yeah. That's that's it. Easy win. Automatic. And, they, and, they have the bye. And it Automatic does, win. And it doesn't sound like the weather is going to be a factor. No. no. So, and, and also, it'll be cold, but you know, that's it. And the one thing I, I noticed in the past, when the Chargers and the Patriots play, the Chargers never showed up. Phillip Rivers is 0-7 against Brady. Uh, but this is a different team, this Chargers. This Chargers team this year. They're 8-1 and one on the road. I, I just don't see the Patriots being that... Uh, insurmountable. Patriot-like. Yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> I mean, they're, they're very they're, beatable. Yeah, they're they're an average playoff team this year. There's nothing to be afraid of. Yeah, and and, it, and no one is afraid. And Gronkowski's still not 100%. I don't know what's wrong with him. Edelman, Edelman's making unusual mistakes for Edelman in the playoff, in, in the uh, last couple of games here. I mean, and I Brady's mean, a middle-of-the-road quarterback now. Yeah, and he seems to either have a good first half or a good second half. So, you know, if you catch him at the right time, I, I just I just don't see the Patriots being the Patriots of all. I, I wouldn't even be surprised if the Chargers win this one straight up. I, I think so, too. I mean, they're certainly going to cover, I think, and they, I think they might even win it. You want me to do the next game? Sure. Which one do you want me to do? It's your pick. Either one. All right. Well, I'll do the Dallas Cowboys at the Los Angeles Rams. The Rams are a seven-point favorite with an over-under of 49.5. Look, Dallas is playing great in the playoffs, and they're playing great since Samari Cooper came over. It really turned their season around, and Los Angeles has been struggling as late, but I think this is the week they turn it around. I think uh, they're they're just going to outlast Dallas, and I think it's going to be a high-scoring game, and I think uh, the Rams are going to score late in the fourth quarter, and they're going to pull out this, and it's going to be – I think they're going to even surpass the seven points. That they're favored by. Well, I'm going with the Cowboys. Okay, uh, I, it's I, a good move. I, I just like the I way the Cowboys have been playing. I just like the way the Cowboys have been playing. I, I know McVay's got a two and zero record coming off bye weeks, all that stuff, and they had probably one of the most prolific offenses throughout the first two thirds of the season. But ever since Cooper Cup went down, ever since Gurley's had that knee injury, that offense has not looked good, and they've been barely squeaking by on a lot of their games. So I and the way. The way Dak Prescott's playing, the way Ezekiel Elliott's playing, uh, Amari Cooper has disappeared in the last couple of weeks for Dallas, but everybody else has been getting open. Sure. So well, I'm, a, I'm thinking, you know, that's his effect. Amari exactly. Cooper. <laughs> so I, I just think the Rams are going to focus on shutting down Cooper more than anybody else. And you may see Beasley have another good game. So uh, I'm going with the Cowboys. I, I don't know if they're going to win. I, I, I know that seven point for me is too much to give it to the Rams. All right, last game of the week. The Philadelphia Eagles at the New Orleans Saints. Saints are an eight-point favorite, and there's an over-under 50 and a half. I'll, I'll say this right out. I don't see them going over 50, to be honest with you. <laughs> I, 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 this is the first time I'm going to say something about an over-under here all season, but I think you're going to see a really good, possibly an even offensive game. I think the Eagles have a better defense than New Orleans, especially lately now. And, uh, you know, they got lucky with the double dunk against the Bears. Yeah, yeah. But I think that the Bears have a stronger defense than the Saints do. And the Eagles were starting to have no problem with that Bears defense in the second half. I think that kind of play continues. And I hate going against a foles led Eagles team. <laughs> the Carson Wentz lovers aside, I think they're a better team with Foles at quarterback. And considering they're not going to be able to keep them, they're, they're probably going to be playing their hearts out here. I'm going with the Eagles here. Yeah, I'm going with the Eagles too, just because it's going. I think it'll be closer than that eight point spread. Look, look the Saints destroyed the Eagles the last time they played earlier in the season, uh, but that was a different team. I mean, Nick Foles is now the quarterback, and so I think it should be a lot closer. I mean, I don't see how it cannot be more close because they're not going to get blown out forty eight to whatever it was. 
The, my, my big concern is the Eagles secondary. I mean, Mitchell Trubisky threw for th- over 300 yards against them. So uh, that's my big concern. But, look, I, I don't think the Eagle – Eagles are going to win, but I think they're really going to keep it close. So I think uh, I'm taking the Eagles. Well, you also got to remember the last couple of games here for New Orleans too. That offense was not good. Sure, sure. So uh, you know there there was a couple games. I I think it was what the Carolina game where they didn't even score ten points. Sure, sure. So I you know the the, Bo- both the defensive team, effort could be there for the Eagles. Both teams are different than when they faced each other last. So that's yeah. why I'm thinking this is going to be a, a closer game than what a lot of people think. It'll be a closer game than that eight point spread that Vegas put out. So yeah, I'm I'm going with the Eagles. All righty, that's our picks for the divisional playoff rounds. Just to recap, I did the Colts, Chargers, Eagles, and Cowboys. I did the Chiefs, the Rams, the Chargers, and the Eagles. And I just want to remind everyone that this week's Pro Pick segment is sponsored by Bright Tech. Bright Tech offers unique no-dust lighting products that fit right into your home. No construction required. Elevate design should be available to everyone, not just the folks with the big bank accounts. Trick out your living room. Create your perfect reading nook. Whatever the situation, Bright Tech has a lighting solution just for you. And and now get 5% off your entire order when using our promo code RADIO5OFF at checkout. Head on over to brighttechshop.com and start designing the life you want. Bright Tech, your bright life realized. And don't forget, uh, these blog the game picks will be up on the Turnpike Sports blog. Go to turnpikesportsradio.com, click on the blog button. You'll see them up there after this show is released. You get in touch with us again, 609-512-6510 is the text or call in line. Uh, you can uh, reach us at on Twitter or Facebook, at Turnpike Sports for either of those. And you can email the show, info at turnpikesportsradio.com. Don't forget to watch us on your smart TVs through Binge Networks. All right, everyone, enjoy the football this weekend. It should be a lot of fun if any uh, last week was any indication. So uh, we'll see you next time on the Turnpike. 